Good morning, everyone. We welcome you once again to Lighthouse Missionary Baptist Church, where the Word of God is preached. Worthy, less fortunate, and those who are members of the community are fed or clothed. Welcome to Lighthouse Church that strives to uphold the commandments of Christ. Because you, we are blessed today to have you in our midst. And we just ask that you just relax at your tent doors, that you prepare your hearts and minds as we go forth in service on this morning. <clears throat> we do thank God that you are tuning in and those that will be tuning in later as we progress through the service. We thank God for those as well. Because all of you and your dedication to the house, we are blessed. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Our church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior in the order of profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, will solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give praise in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain his worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards the expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority of the government. We also engage you to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, and to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectfully in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all of men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. The brother engaged to watch over, to pray for, to exhort, and stir up each other unto every good and good word in the world. To guard each other's reputation, not music exposing the infirmities of others, to support participate in each other's joys, <coughs> and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows. To cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of our Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure the balcony of and through life on the evil report and good report, to seek to live for the glory of God, 
who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with the mother church, where we can carry out the spirit of this company and the principles of God's word. Amen. I invite you to sing along with us as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning I come to rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, Glory in the person, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubins and seraphims, Falling down before thee, which work thy heart and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, to the eye of sinful men thy glory may not see. Holy Thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name. Earth and sky and sea. <clears throat> holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. 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 We don't ask our first lady to come in her own way and share with us our scripture lesson for this morning. <laughs> complain, Jacob. Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is discarded by my God. Do, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and he is understanding no one can May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So. <laughs> 
somebody somewhere should be praising God for God is good all the time. We have another praise of song of praise at this time before we prepare our hearts and minds for the hour of prayer.
We come to the hour of prayer, praise, and exhortation. People might wonder why we use such a long name to prayer. So why can't you just say prayer, Pastor? Because in the midst of prayer, we do all of those things. We praise, we get exhortation to God. We lift them up. We do a whole lot of things, or should, when we are in the midst of prayer. And as always, I ask that you would leave on the altar your family, friends, your co-workers, acquaintances you see as you travel through this life, whether on the bus or the street corners and the stores. Because the divine mind with everything in life is that we all have issues and we certainly all stand in need of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and we follow, we come humbly as we know how. As creatures unto our creator. Thanking you, Father, for being a loving, kind, and just God. For being a God that never changes, unlike your creation, who is happy one moment, mad the next. Yes. Uncertain one moment, and glad the next. We have people that are constantly changing emotions all over the place. Whichever way life blows us, there's an emotion. However we are treated, our emotions play. But you are a long-suffering God. A God that is the same in the past, same in the present, and will not change in the future. And we think we just thank you, Father, for your steadfastness, for your loving kindness that you bestow upon us. Yes. That even in our sinful and sometimes disobedient ways. You look beyond our false father and you continue to bless us as only a God like you is able to do. So we just thank and praise you this morning for all that you've done in our lives and certainly for all you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your son down to earth for the fix of form of man to complete the salvation that you have begun after man's sin in the garden of you. You could have just discarded us and started anew. But you and the infinite wisdom, Father, decided that it, it was necessary to secure our salvation. That this creation, mankind, was worth the effort and so, Lord, we're just so thankful that you stuck by our side. That you brought us through seen and unseen danger. That you walk hand in hand with us through the uncertain times in life. When the storms were blowing and we didn't know which way we should turn. Bills coming from seemingly every direction. Not knowing what to do, but just stepped in, Lord. And you say to us, this is what you need to do. Trust me first. That then all the things will fall into place. So we just thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace in our lives. And we ask your blessing upon all of our members here, Lord, those viewing. I have some team membership, Lord. You know why they are still 
are not coming. You know what has gotten their attention as well as what needs to be left alone in their lives. So we just lift your hand, Lord, that you would just continue to prick their hearts and their minds and let them know that life will not be complete until they return back into the fold. That there will always be something yes, yes. missing, something I'm missing. Yes. Because if we would just take a moment, just just think about it and reflect. Our whole purpose in life is to seek you, Lord. Because when we don't, there's a void. Yes. And we find, Father, that everyone who finds themselves in that situation searches hither and yonder, Lord, trying to fill that void with material things. Yes, yes. With family. With those things that they believe will fill that emptiness that is there. But Father, we know, Lord, that the only thing that that can fill it is to have you as an intimate part of our lives. So we just thank you, Lord, that you are who you are. That in spite of our misgivings, Lord, in life, that you never have walked away from us, you never turned your back on us. That you continue to bless us each and every day, Lord, as we journey to this night. And Father, we recognize that we sin upon showing you glory. This past week, we, we look back and we can see the time when we lost our temper, Lord. That attitude. Or thought things in our minds about people that should not have been there. Whatever the sin may have been, Lord. Whatever that disobedience unto you might have been. We ask, Father, for your forgiveness. We ask for you to cleanse them, Lord. We ask for a greater portion of your strength. Because we recognize that we can't do it by ourselves. As much as we might try and put on that front before people that we got everything under control. The fact of the matter is that we cannot do anything apart from you. So bless the Father as the journey through this service, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds and receive Holy Communion, as we just sing and commune one with another. Just bless the service, Lord. That one is all said and done and the benediction has been given, that my all have been pleasing in your holy sight. Bless thy house as we continue in our ministry in this community. Especially now as we're gearing up, Lord, for our community awareness and ministry outreach day. Even though it'll be a small scale, Lord, let it be such that it will have a great impact on the people of this community. And Lord, willing, Lord, if, if any word comes down by this time next year, we will go back to the park, Lord, where we can really reach the community in a far greater manner. So bless Father. All these your servants. Bless this your servant. Bless my message that will be coming forth in just a few minutes. Have your way, Father. It's only God that you be so willing and able to do. And we always stand ready to give your name all praise, all honor, and all glory. For it is our humble prayer in Christ's name. Amen.
Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. The unprecedented God. Unprecedented. It's something that has never been done, experienced, or known before, or ever existed in the past. Last, we were living in a time of unprecedented power. And that's evident by the mighty engines that power race cars to speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour. Engines that pull trains that are close to a mile long in an end. Engines that are able to lift massive aircraft off the ground carrying both passengers and luggage as well as the engines that propel cargo and astronauts into space. By harnessing the power of the atom, we have created enough energy to light entire cities, and enough weaponry to annihilate them many times over. Power is something that we're just beginning to understand. But along that same line, we find that after leads to our power of conscience, baseball has its power hitters, football has their power runners. The fullbacks used to be the name of the game, but now they see halfbacks with the speed and power to run with the ball at great distances. Basketball has the power forwards. Woodlifters may have been built and still are many times as most powerful men and women in the world. So we find that athletes in every sport strive for greater power to establish new world records. Power is something which we are all familiar as we can grasp to some of Extent is significance. Throughout history, Lighthouse, we have stood in awe of the mighty power of nature. Light so powerful that it blinds us. World so powerful that it can wash away entire civilizations. Wind so powerful that it can topple brick and steel buildings. And fire so powerful that it can melt rock. We truly think about, or we truly think we know, what power is, what it does, 
until it comes to Almighty God. Then the script completely fit the flips. Isaiah 40 and 28 tells us that our minds can't comprehend all that God can create or do in his wisdom. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither thinks or is weird. His understanding is unsearchable. In other words, God is telling us in this passage that he will do new things that have not been heard of. He shall open our understanding to know that his ways are not like those of ours or those of mankind. God is the source of all power, not only in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm as well. where the true nature and extent of power escapes our limited understanding. God is omnipotent. He possesses infinite, complete, and perfect power. He can do anything he wants to do. Absolutely anything. You know, we try to place God in a box and determine what it is that he can and cannot do. But God will never fit in a box. Because he's unprecedented and he can do things that we cannot even tackle. None of us can make that claim. Our capabilities are limited. But God can do anything that he Will. Anything that he desires to do, he can just speak it into action. Anyone that can speak an entire universe and a life into existence is unprecedented. And it's be revered and highly respected. People in society today are so caught up in the busyness of life that they allow themselves to be distracted to the point that they have forgotten the awesomeness of God's divine power. Or the word or term, or should say, and the word or term, unprecedented, never even crosses their mind. And it's strange given the drought that has been gripping the West Coast for quite some times. It's strange given the wildfires that are consuming many acres right now. It's strange considering the many strange events of nature that has been pounding mankind for the last several years. How we can forget the extent of God's power it is beyond me. But what we have done, we have taken great joy in exercising power and control over those less fortunate in life and have abused our power time and time again. But because God is, um, is an unprecedented God, he will counter those abusive acts against those he loves in unimaginable ways. If we knew it were good for us, yes, we would be walking upright and righteous before God at all times. Because his power and ability to do whatever he wants to maintain order in his life is something that we should never take for granted. The long and short of all this is simply that mankind has tried to figure out God for centuries, but it's always come up short. God is not predictable like you and me. Not predictable like mankind. But we know what they will do. We're creatures of habit. 
Don't sway too much on what we do each and every day. Get up and have a coffee the same time in the morning. Be in the house around the same time each day, knowing when the bus will come in or when the traffic is the heaviest. Know what time you take naps or lay down for the night. We are predictable, but God is not. You never know what he's going to do or when he's going to do it. You never know what great and impossible things he will do. Because he is an unprecedented God, just when we think we have the upper hand or advantage over others, God is showing us time and time again that he has other plans. And will do something never seen before by mankind. Just like he did with the Israelites. If you remember in the book of Exodus, they had left the confines of Egypt yes. and journeyed to the Red Sea. Yes. Moses had them all camped around the Red Sea waiting on God to lead them or to let them know what came, what will come next. And the Bible tells me that before long the Egyptian army was rapidly approaching the nation of Israel. War at their back, couldn't go forward nor to the right or the left. But God showed his unlimited power. Yes, yes. Divided the Red Sea into two, allowing the nation of Israel to cross on dry land. Unprecedented. Something never before seen by mankind. So when you find yourself pinned against the walls of life, yes, yes. or you see that spiritual attacks are increasing in your life, and that there's no clear path out, just call on the unprecedented God, like the persecuted Christians are doing in countries where Christianity is being suppressed, in the name of communism and Islam, call on the unprecedented God, because he can change hearts, he can change minds. Because the same God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fire furnace, and Daniel out of the lion's den, can do new and unheard things in your life. God can stop a bullet if he chooses. He can turn the direction of a knife that may be coming towards you. God can take extreme anger one second yes. and turn it into reconciliation and joy the next. God will do the unimaginable yes. Yes. because he can do all things. He has the power and he will do it if his will calls for it. Just ask Mary and Elizabeth to unlikely candidates to bear and give birth to the two most important figures in the New Testament. The two that would ultimately seal man's salvation. Ask them about God's power. Ask them about how unprecedented our God really is. Yes. They will tell you, as well many others throughout our history who have seen and witnessed God's power at work, yes. that God is unprecedented and will do things that will defy mankind's imagination. 
Because he has the power to do whatever he so desires. He can change the mindset of those he has created and draw them to him. As we see with the Muslims now leaving their faith in large numbers, converting to Christianity. Because God has done some great and powerful things in their life. So great and powerful that they can no longer deny Him. They can no longer embrace Islam. So they come running, seeking to know Christ and His goodness. Our God is amazing. And He is and always will be. An unprecedented God. As we to play the to the doors of the church. You just want to say, God is standing before all of you, before all of us. The Spirit is there. If you look for our physical body, then you'll be looking for a long time. But he's there. He's knocking. He's calling. The question is, will he come? Will he come by baptism? Those that have not received Christ will know the end of the thing. That can be had with God. God calling you to come by. He's calling you to come by where your Christian is seen. Those that are in between churches. Those that have left and been away for a while because of something that happened in the church that you were in. God wants you back. He's knocking today. He's calling out to you. God's calling for you to come by way of the dedication of their faith. They may be pushed so far down that you no longer recognize it. That you feel that you have no connection left with God or Christ Jesus. God is knocking today. He's knocking and he's calling out to you. Will you go to him? Will you receive him? Will you let him into your heart and suck with him and be with you? God is calling. What will your decision be? As we end up our Facebook and our live stream platform for portion of our service, we just ask that you read the announcements and anything else that's been posted to your edification. You might be on the wall for but all of us here are us. We are gearing up. For August 28th, for our community awareness and make sure we stay. Those who are dealing, try to fit in your plans, your calendar, that you want to come out and see what we're doing here in Southwest Carolina. I guarantee you, you'll be blessed because you can. Until we meet again, God bless you. I'm going to see you the same day, same time, same station. God bless you.